I recently got a new job, so my use cases for Obsidian are a little bit different depending on the context I'm working in. If we take a look at my vault switch, I have four vaults that I actually use. I have my personal vault, which is synced to my mobile device, the Obsidian onboarding course, which you can purchase in the description below, which goes through all of the Obsidian information that I know, really. Then the research vault, which is a vault I'm collaborating with at work. And then I have Vaultcraft, which is my personal notes, also a collaborative vault with the person that I do the PKM podcast with, Jonathan Stewart. This is my canvas dashboard for the Vaultcraft vault. So if I go to the top left and expand, you can see I'm using the recent files plugin. I don't really use the start or the tags pane, they're just there. Then I have the outline and the search. And on the right sidebar, we've got the files and you can see we've got a folder for myself, a folder for John, and then I have these files and I'll go through the sync settings a little bit later. And then we have the backlinks and outgoing links panel in case I need them. But I do actually have the backlinks inside of a file so if we zoom in here and we go to building a second brain and if we use the outline and go all the way down to the bottom you can see i've got lots of miscellaneous sources but at the bottom i have the backlinks inside of the page and this to me is actually easier than going into the side panel and looking for the backlinks here and as you can see they're exactly the same results it's just i have that setting turned on so bottom left settings, click on backlinks in the core plugins, and then I turn that on so backlinks are in the document. It can be file specific, but I just keep it consistent across the board. And I'm going to go to the ribbon, click on home, and this takes me to my home dashboard, zooms me into this card. So if I zoom out, you can see everything that's going on. I have a blue card over here, which is my sources inbox. I have a blue card down here, which is my project inbox. I then have an orange card here, which is the complete projects, and all of the files inside of this vault for me are research projects. Then we have the three red cards over here, which are like pending ideas, so noodling ideas, curious ideas, and other ideas. And then the green card, which is the main place I go to. Something worth noting is all of these cards, you can see query dashboard projects, query dashboard noodling ideas, they are all from one file. So if I double click here, you can see it's taken me to the projects heading in the query dashboard. So I'm in my Danny folder, the other folder and query dashboard. If you go into the files, you can see this is where we are and this is the canvas. I then have a link to my Obsidian Vault and you can see there is the link obsidian-vault and then I've named the vault. So my Obsidian. So when I go to the vault switcher, you can see there's the name my obsidian which means if i click on this it will take me to my vault and this will take me to the research vault that's a quick way for me to go backwards and forwards between different vaults what we have here in the query dashboard is as you can imagine a dashboard full of queries and i'm using a data view the community plugin to query or search all of the stuff inside of this vault and i'm creating a table i'm getting rid of the title and i'm going to call it active projects because that's the one i want it to be and then status i want the status property to use a notion term inside of this table view and i'm looking for project tag so every project has a project tag and it's from the danny folder because i don't want john's projects in here as well so when i come out you can see there's the title active projects there's the status this is the status of this project and this is a project inside of my folder so if we come down here it's inside the danny folder and it's also got the project tag so if i go to the top left and tag you can see there's the project and if we open up this file you can see we've got the project tag in there and it's in the danny folder because this is active projects i'm making sure they're not done because i don't want to see done projects i don't want to see my project templates so i get rid of that and there are certain statuses of a project that I don't want to see. So I don't want to see idea, pause, other, or done. I could write this in a different way, but this to me is just easier and clearer to see. And then I have sorts. So I'm sorting by priority high, one at the top, priority two, medium, and then three. So it goes high, medium, low, top to bottom. And then the same thing for the status, but we have produce at the top, then edit, then script, then research, and then everything else underneath. And for all of these other searches are essentially just a copy and paste. You can come in here, you can see it's essentially a copy and paste, just changing out what I want to include in the where clauses. So filters are essentially where clauses and then changing the sorts and changing the name of the query. If you are interested to see all of these queries, this vault is public and I'll leave a link in the description below for you to browse around. But now we have the completed projects. And as you can imagine, we're looking for the status to be done. 
Now coming back to the Canvas dashboard, we've got the active projects, pause projects, high priority projects, and interesting projects in this green card, because these are the ones that I'm really focused on that I'm actually paying attention to. You can see these are the ideas I want to follow up on. These are the ideas that have a higher priority. These are the ideas that I've either started in some way or I've paused for some reason, hence pause projects, and then the active project I'm working on. But as we move over, these are still ideas, so they could be down here, in the interesting projects, but the reason this is noodling, i.e. I'm thinking about it, is it's a medium priority. They're not high priority. I'm not interested right now, but there's information that I've picked up and I've got some ideas and thoughts about all of these topics, hence medium priority. It's not something I don't care about. It's just not my focus right now. And the difference between medium and curious to me is medium, I'm, I'm going to focus on this. This is something I'm going to work on. Curious is, it's not boring. It's not something that I've just come across. It's something I'm curious about, but I don't know enough about to really have an opinion. Hence, it's curious. And then I have the low priority ideas of things that are there, but I, I just really don't care about right now. That may change in the future, though. Hence, the ability to change the priority and then the other things here are actually just research files. So if I have a look into the query, we click on other ideas, it takes me down to that section, and we go into the data view query, I'm looking for status is other. So it's not an idea, it's a research file. And this basically means that the Bayesian rule is something I've come across, and I've just put a load of stuff in it, but I have no idea what it means, I don't know what I'm doing with it, it's just somewhere for it to go. Moving over to my sources inbox, you can see I've created the file there. So it's again, another data view query, but it's showing sources and the query is a bit different. So having a look at this query, I'm still getting rid of the title and I'm calling it sources and I'm going to use the file creator time and I've named it created, but I'm looking for files from Danny sources. So it's the, that's the folder. And you can see here in the files, we've got the sources folder here, 3,195 files at the moment. But the special part of this query comes in the where clause or the filter. I'm looking for files where it doesn't contain an in link, also known as a backlink, that is in the projects folder. So if I open up this Coach Education Squid Game source and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see there are no backlinks. So there are no in links to this file. If I then bring up the building a second brain, you can see this is a, this looks a little different. That's because of a plugin I have that I'll explain later on. But this is in the projects folder. You can see it's in projects. And if I add a link here, so I now have an outgoing link from building a second brain to coach education. So coach education now has a backlink and you may have noticed it's now gone from the sources because this source has now been referenced in this project, which means it's no longer in the inbox because I've sourced it somewhere, I've referenced it somewhere. If I remove the link, it removes the backlink and therefore it appears back in the inbox. And when we come down to the project's inbox, it works in a very similar way, but the query has to be different. This query is the exact same principle. I have a table, I have my from, so source, I then have a where clause, but I haven't added flatten and this can look very confusing. So I would highly suggest just to copy and paste and play around to see what you can do with it. So I then have the in links or backlinks as a result. I want to show the status of that backlink and I want to show the priority of that backlink. We're looking for the Danny projects. So we're looking in the Danny projects folder for files in there. Then I'm adding in a filter and basically saying don't include this file because I don't care. And the flatten is putting all of the links, the file in links together, which is then being looked through. So is there any links in there that goes to something from the Danny projects? And is that file done? And then group that by the linked projects. So if we come back out, you can see this is a file that is linked inside of this file. This file is done, which means this can show. And the status of this project, this creator project, is idea and interesting. This project has a status of idea and low, and both of these are linked inside of here. So if I come inside of this written project and scroll down, you can see there's the color difference. So it's an out link inside of this file. And if I scroll all the way up, you can see this file is done, but the related project isn't done. And coming back to the home canvas, this is essentially linked 
projects that I may want to focus on next. So I know I've just written about AI writing and how AI text generation, which is my choice of term, uh, is related to a creator's life, that project, that idea. So these may be ideas I want to push up in the priority level for my main active projects. How do I do that? Well, I'm using the metadata menu plugin and I have a status property and a priority property and I can come in, change it to whatever I want from this list and it will automatically change it in the filter view. And then I can do the same with priority, change it from high, interesting, medium, curious or low. For example, let's say I want to change behavior and go, okay, this is no longer an idea. I'm actually researching this now. What that will do is it will go out of this filter and go into this filter because I'm actively doing something with this project. But maybe I'm not doing something with it, so it's still an idea. However, I want this to be really high on my priority list. So it's going to disappear from the active projects because it's now an idea, but it's now in the high priority projects because it's a high priority idea. Now I'm going to move it back to where it was because uh, it's not that high on my list right now. And again, it's gonna disappear from here and reappear over here. For adding something new inside of this vault, I click on the green plus to add a project. This is a new project. So one of these orange looking style files, this could be a story or a narrative about something interesting. Or I can click on the yellow circle plus and that will add in a new source. Now this is a source that is not in Zotero. So this may be a podcast while I'm on the train, so I can't use Zotero, or something that I've just come up with, an idea, or something that I've read that isn't in Zotero yet. But if it is in Zotero, I go to the left side, and this is where I have my blue square for Zotero. I click on that, and it brings up my option to import something from Zotero. All of these different colored buttons that you can see me pushing around is from a plugin called Commander. The ribbon plugins, we have the home Zotero. This is a temporary workspace. So I'm using the Workspace Plus plugin. It's an, basically an extension of the core Workspace plugin to load, as you can see, the home canvas or all of the different things that I'm doing. I'll show you the temp workspace in a minute. I then have the outline command inside the ribbon, so I don't have to search for it. And then I have John's workspace, so I can see what he's up to as well. Inside of the tab bar, we have the new project quick add and the source quick add and if I scroll down you can see here is the quick add plugin I come in here I go into the settings and this is all it is it's looking for the template path which is inside of the Danny folder templates and my project template because John's got a different one because he's got his own preferences I create that file inside of my projects folder and that's basically it and the only difference with sources is it's the source template and it's the source folder I've done a video all about Zotero integration, which I'll leave in a link card up to the top right up here. I'm using DataView for obviously all of the queries that we've just gone through. Metadata menu, the only thing I've really changed here because it's a collaborative vault is Danny class because I don't want all of John's classes as well because they may be different. So I know John has a different project class to me. I'm using the plugin update tracker to make sure that I can keep track of the plugin updates recent files, which is in the top left. So if I'm clicking through different things, like, oh, I know I wanted to go back there. I can go to the recent files if the back button doesn't work. I'm using the snippet downloader for an aesthetic thing. If I go to the appearance tab and scroll all the way down, you can see I've got lots of different snippets. The additions snippet and color theme snippet are snippets I've made, but these three here, the MCL gallery card, etc., etc., are from a repository, a GitHub repository, that I've just linked inside of here. So when there's a new update to it, it comes in automatically rather than me having to go do it again because uh, I can't be bothered. I then have style settings, which lets me customize those snippets. The main reason I use this for though is the supercharged links. And you can see this is where I customize the way things look. But the supercharged links is a plugin. So I've added the supercharged links plugin. And what this is doing is looking for a project tag. This is looking for a source tag, and this is looking for a status done. Then I come into the style settings, supercharge links, click on it, and then I can select the color. So you can see there's the color. I can add a font weight and change all these different things. All I've done is change the color and added an emoji at the start. And then we have the workspaces plus plugin, and you can see we've got the home, the temp, and John's workspace, and that's just an extension from the core plugin workspaces here so the core plugins got to be on and then workspaces plus lets me be a little bit more specific about them and it just adds a command which lets me push it here so if i push on temp 
You can see it brought up the building a second brain project, the outline, and on my other screen, which I'll show you over here, it's brought up my canvas exploration, another outline, and actually the file again in a second place so I can see it on both my screens. But you know what? I'm going to move that over there, click on home because I don't want to be there, and it's taking me back here. As for the sync settings, I have added my name Danny, so when John sees something sync, he knows that it comes from my PC or my device rather than his, and John's done the same his side, he's put John in there, so I know it's his change, but everything else here is just left empty, and the reason is because I don't want John to have my settings, my appearance settings, my themes, etc. He can have his own stuff, he, he can work his own way, and I can work my own way, and this means that it's, it works like a Minecraft sort of server where this is a public server, he can use his add-ons, I can use my add-ons, but we are still using the same files, and I only sync the images files so he can see the images, so if I've clipped something from an article or something, he can see that when he's going through my sources to have a look at whatever it is that I found, and the same the other way around, John's just kept it basic like me. And going to my personal vault, you can see I only have one obsidian vault up. So this is, I'm not going to put any cuts in. I'm just going to show you how quickly it is. And there it is. My personal vault's already up. Now, I'm not going to go into some of these files because obviously it's got personal information. But this is a very, very, very basic vault. These are essentially all of the files. So if I go to the left side, I've got the outline that I don't use, the search which I don't use. I have some documents. So I have some Word documents and Excel documents saved in this folder. Uh, then I have my book project which is linked to another vault, uh, that's a collaborative vault. I have a brain dump, which you can see here, it's just some random stuff that I've put in. I don't bother with the plus button because when I have the brain dump in my personal stuff, you can see here it's me watching the news or finding something that was weird, like an odd story, something like that, and then some emails to some places that I thought about uh, having a look at. I then have the work hours for the new job, and I have that in an Excel spreadsheet, which I can find here, very quick and easy. Caracorder, for those of you unfamiliar, that's like a different keyboard, it's just some help links, nothing too complicated. Football, again, a link to an Excel document, and then some other information down the bottom about players, league information, and passwords, and information like that for the football club. And then for my personal information, again, I have my Excel spreadsheet in there with all of monies and stuff, targets, and other financial information down below, and personal information, which again, I'm not going to scroll down, but as you can see, that's the entire vault. And when we go into the plugins, I have Commander, only so I can go to the home workspace to go back where I was, just like the last vault, Obsidian Git to have a security blanket for my personal information, plugin update tracker in case there's a plugin update for Obsidian Git mainly, and then the workspace plus to get the Commander to work. So if I do go onto the brain dump file, because I know this one's safe, then I click on there, it takes me back here. That, that's literally it. I'm currently working on video lessons to go inside of the Obsidian onboarding course that goes through how I built the vault, all the intricacies, nuances and decisions that I make to either use different vaults, to use one vault, and how I work between the four or five of them to get myself working. And for consistent viewers of this channel, I did an announcement a week or two weeks ago about the different style of content I'm moving towards, but with this job I have far less time to focus on this channel, so I'll be focused on the course, doing a couple of updates on this channel here and there, and we'll see where the time takes me, because um, let's just say my schedule's rather busy and Morgan is, like, a lifesaver, but that's a whole other conversation, maybe for another video.